Hello everybody, uh, my name is uh, Dr. Zhang. I'm an internal medicine physician and a researcher. Uh, my previous research focused on mitochondrial aging. So today I'm going to talk about my mitochondrial aging and COVID. I believe that uh, a COVID had caused accelerated aging in everybody who had a COVID infection. I will tell you why. And also I will provide my opinion on how to slow down this aging process post COVID. I do not believe anybody has been talking about this and uh, please share this video uh, so that more people can benefit from this. Uh, let's begin. We all know that uh, increased inflammation is a hallmark of a post COVID infection. From the clinical experience and research, there is no doubt that a COVID infection caused inflammation. And uh, this may be acute or as a chronic. In the previous video, I talked about how the antibody bind to the virus and how the virus and antibody complex caused chronic inflammation and further oxidative damage. This process happens in every people who had a COVID infection, whether they have a long COVID symptoms or not. Uh, this chronic inflammation will have a long-term effects on the body, including increased uh, heart attack, stroke, diabetes, and dementia. And I'll talk about this topic later, but today we'll focus on its effect on aging. Uh, we will talk how it will affect our mitochondria. So let's look at our mitochondria. Everybody had some knowledge about the mitochondria. And uh, you probably remember the uh, movie Star Wars talking about uh, midi chlorian. So people gain a lot of power from it. Looks like uh, we believe that uh, this is a combination of mitochondria and uh, an organelle called chloroplasts. Apparently, mitochondria does not give you so much power. However, generally speaking, it is a good thing to have more mitochondria uh, in your cells. Uh, about a billion years ago, uh, our single cell eukaryotes are sleepy and tired, so they cannot get enough energy as they can only make a few ATPs from a few carbohydrates that were not readily available. Then the bacteria invaded the eukaryotes. This was a special bacteria. It was later become mitochondria. Mitochondria actually is an independent living organism. Once it entered the cell, it gave up some of its gene to the eukaryotes, but returned part of the gene in a circular structure. The circular gene is now our mitochondrial DNA. So let's look at what the mitochondria can do for us. Uh, first, they produce almost all our ATPs, which is our energy source. And two, they have a lot to say as um, to decide on to survive our cells. Essentially, they decide if the host cell will live or die. So if the host cell gets injured, they initiate the apoptosis process and that literally kill the cell. Uh, they also communicate to the nucleus telling them the, uh, the cell needs to divide or proliferate or to be silent. And uh, the interaction between the mitochondria and the nucleus as constant uh, play a larger role in the survival and the death of the cells. Let's look at uh, the mitochondria theory of aging. So we know that the basic function of the mitochondria is oxidative phosphorylation, which uh, generates ATP for our consumption. Also, they consume oxygen. That is why it is called oxidative phosphorylation. Almost all oxygens are consumed by mitochondria in our body. And uh, literally, the mitochondria is like a furnace. The interior of the mitochondria is much hotter than the rest of the cells. However, the furnace is not 100% efficient. This is the electron transport chain of the mitochondria. So electrons pass through the chain and uh, facilitate the formation of CO2 in the process ATP is formed. But the byproduct from this passing electron 
can happen. The electrons can bind to oxygen prematurely before reaching the end of the electron transport chain. This creates reactive oxygen species, a free radical that is reactive to any molecules. This process is unavoidable. So the cell is also equipped with the molecules uh, called ROS scavengers. They can bind to the free radicals and eliminate them. One of the most abundant scavengers is uh, called glutathione. There are also others in the mitochondria and outside the mitochondria. Our mitochondria is generally healthy when the body is young, but when the body is getting older, the cell generates more free radicals uh, than the defending mechanism can clear up. Uh, they have a higher level of reactive species. When you have a higher level of reactive oxygen species, they can oxidize and damage the mitochondrial structure. The free radical will also spread out of the mitochondria and damage other parts of the cell. And uh, this is a part of the aging process. Another part of this is the mitochondrial DNA. Uh, mitochondrial DNA mutation will accumulate with aging due to oxidative stress. So unlike a nuclear DNA, mitochondrial DNA does not have good DNA repair mechanisms. Their mutation cannot be repaired. So the frequency of increased mutation will also increase with age, which further impair mitochondrial function. Another aspect is that the cell can also generate more mitochondria when the demand is high uh, when you are young, but the ability is also impaired. So when the mitochondria is damaged, they cannot make up with the new mitochondria. And uh, another aspect is that a damaged mitochondria can be limited by a process called a mitophagy. And uh, this process is also slowed down. So as, as a result, when you age, you have a fewer mitochondria and uh, you have unhealthy mitochondrial cells. Uh, let's look at the consequence of all of this. First is that your mitochondria reserve is reduced. The body may be able to maintain the normal amount ATP production, but the reserve is decreased. And the stress, uh, you cannot make enough ATP to satisfy additional need. Second, aged cells have a higher rate of cell death due to apoptosis. So you lose cells in every organ uh, every each year. The third, because of risk of apoptosis in every cell in aged people, the body has to protect the cell from dying. It will make more protective proteins such as BCL2, BCLXL, and so on. The aged cell basically is having a condition like sick but maintained on drug. So this created a condition that when a genetic mutation happened, they turned into cancer cells, they will most likely to grow out into a cancer. This is why cancer mostly happened in old people. Now I'm talking about what happens with COVID infection. You know, COVID is a systemic infection. It creates a chronic inflammation after acute infection. Unless the virus and antibody complex are cleared rapidly, almost everybody will have a chronic inflammation. Chronic inflammation can cause an early onset of aging process due to a high level of free radicals. It can potentially reduce the life expectancy of our generation. So in the next video, I'll talk about how to slow down the aging process associated with COVID patient. Thanks for listening.